there's this question that's been asked constantly, which is when does China acquire a sort of industrial design culture? I'm the author of Little Rice, which is a book about Xiaomi, the Chinese phone company that's now exporting both hardware and services globally and what that, what that means for the company, for China, for the world. Uh, it's a book uh, that's published by the Columbia Global Reports imprint. So this book is a result of me getting lost on the Shanghai subway. I got out at the wrong stop uh, and I walked out into the middle of a mall, which is a completely ordinary occurrence. There are so many malls in Shanghai that when you walk out of the subway, very often you are in a mall. And so wandering through this unfamiliar place, I did the thing that people who design confusing malls want you to do, which is I slowed down and started looking around and there was this booth selling phones and I needed a, needed a phone at the time. So there was a nice black one, very sleek and stylish, nice and pointed and you know, we did that thing of people who don't share a common language, going, kind of, I have some money, you have a phone, surely we can work this out. Um, and I walk out of there with this, with this new phone. It says Me 3 on it, that's all I know about it. And Every day on that campus from picking up the phone for the next several days, if I took the phone out to do anything, one of our Chinese students would say, where did you get that? They didn't even ask what kind of phone it was. They all knew it was a Xiaomi phone. That, this was the hot brand, which I had not understood when I bought it. And so I would talk to them about it and they said, it's the Chinese Apple. This is our big design firm. You know, this, these are the people who are figuring out how to do industrial design the way Apple does it, the way Samsung does it. And it was apparent that this was not an accident, that the phone they'd made was the result of years of planning and work and that they were intending to do it again. So I started tracking them and they just kept getting more and more interesting. And when Nick Lemon, uh, who'd, who'd stepped down as the dean of the Columbia Journalism School, announced he was starting Columbia Global Reports, I thought, Xiaomi has its sights set not just on being a Chinese design firm, but on being a global design firm. Maybe this will be interesting. And that's when he and I started talking about tracking Xiaomi's spread outside of China as a, as a way to think about some of the global forces going on today. What Xiaomi, I think, shows is that the answer to the question, when will they acquire a design culture, is for at least some products, 2013, right? That's, that's when this, the Mi 3, which is the phone that I think was their real design breakthrough. Um, it didn't look like anything else in the market. It's a very stylish phone. Um, that said, there are people inside the company thinking very hard about design. Uh, that's part of what makes Xiaomi such a, a, a company to watch in China. So many people have looked to Lei Jun, who's the CEO, as an example of, oh, that's how we should do it. So China's design culture is kicking off now and will, again, spread to all of these, all of these other products. But what's really interesting about Xiaomi is their, their next phone, the Mi 4, is very close to an iPhone 5. And then the Note, which is my current phone, uh, is very much like a, a Samsung Galaxy S5. So the company, rather than saying we are a design firm or we are a, a sort of a, a copying and shipping firm, just operates across this spectrum. And that's not something we're used to in the U.S. It's usually, you know, you're Sony or you're Apple, it's, it's all branded. Or you're Asus and Acer, where you're just kind of white boxing these, these devices. Xiaomi can operate across that range. And one of the interesting things about the company is, is it ever going to settle down and be design-centric for all of its product lines? Or is there some advantage to both the kind of design copying that they have historically done, that many Chinese companies have historically done, and keeping a design-centric product line at the same time. Um, they're in that world now, which to an American eye looks unstable, but in fact, that may be a new pattern. And that's, I think, one of the big open questions for the company.